Kelsey here. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my updated straight hair routine, but I'm also gonna be sharing with you how I dye my hair as well as give myself a quick haircut. So yeah, it's pretty much a full hair day. So let's just go ahead and hop right into the video. Okay guys, so this is my hair before starting everything. So this is like a four day wash and go. This is like the fourth day of my wash and go. And as you can see, my hair has grown out a lot. I have not dyed my hair in almost over a year. So it was in desperate need of my favorite blue black color. So this is the color that I've been using for like the past two or three years. This is the Agora Royale. And I like to use the color 1-1 blue black. And I have to use about three boxes of this because I have a lot of hair. Here I'm adding the developer. This is the developer that I like to use. I use the 20 volume, but you can use 10 volume. You don't have to do 20 volume. I just like doing 20 because it brings out the blue and the black dye that I'm using. But if you're just using regular black dye, you can do 10 volume um, developer. So you wanna do equal parts of the developer. So however much color you have, you wanna almost have the exact same amount of developer. So as you can see here, I'm just adding a little bit more developer because you wanna make sure that it's nice and creamy, the consistency. So yeah, if it's a little too runny, that probably means you use too much developer. So just kinda of eye it out and make sure you don't put too much developer. Do almost equal parts of the amount of color that you use. Usually it's easier if you have a scale to weigh your color, but I don't have a scale so I have to rely on the eye. So I just like to section my hair in four different sections. This is the easiest way for me to maneuver through my hair before I dye it. Here I'm just using a little bit of Aquaphor on my edges so that I don't stain my skin. And I also like to apply this to my ears, the top of my ears, as well as my nape area because this will stain your skin because this is permanent dye that we are using. Also, I'm protecting my hands. I like to do two pair of gloves on each hand. These are from Sally's as well as this mixing bowl and the color, uh, what's the name of this thing? Yeah, the color brush. Um, so I like to start in the front. Pro tip, make sure you start in the front because if you are doing this at home and you run out of color and you're starting in the back, girl, you're gonna be screwed. So you might wanna start in the front. Also, I like to start in the front because that's the area you see the most. It's in front of my face. Um, so yeah, I like to start at the perimeter of each section. So I'll just apply the color around the entire section, as you see. I just like to do this because it's easier to part when I actually start parting my hair with my fingers. See here, it's just easier if you apply the color on the perimeter before you start. I like to start from the back and work my way to the front of each quadrant. So I'm starting from the back because if I start from the front, I usually will have like color on my face. So it's easier for me just to start in the back of each section and then work my way up. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just applying the color from my roots to the mid shafts. I usually don't apply color to my ends it's because it's the oldest part of your hair. So you really want to baby your ends if you want to see growth, if you want to like retain length. So yeah, try to baby those ends as much as possible. And a part of babying those ends is not putting too many harsh chemicals on it. And if you are gonna drag color to your ends, do like I'm gonna do towards the end of the application. I like to drag it through the ends towards the end of the application so that the color is on my ends for the least amount of time because if I were to put color on my ends at the very beginning of the application, that means the color will be sitting on my ends way longer than me doing it at the very end of my entire color application. I hope that made sense. So yeah, you'll see easier for you to watch me, but I'm trying to explain as best as I can. Also, when I'm using this color brush, I like to use my hands as well. Um, so that's why you have gloves on. So use your hands as well to get in there and make sure the color is nice and saturated through your hair and evenly distributed. So yeah.
Okay, so now this is when I usually take the color and drag it all the way through the very ends of my hair. So now you see my hair is fully saturated and I'm gonna let this sit for about 20 to 25 minutes with a cap over so that it processes faster. Okay, so after I'm done processing, of course I'm gonna rinse out the color first before I go in and shampoo. So I just like to rinse until I no longer see a lot of blue in my shower. And I like to have gloves on while I do this because I don't want to stain my nails because in the past I have had that issue. So just wear gloves while you're washing out your color. So for shampoo, I'm gonna be using the Ajua Beauty Blue Tansy Clarifying Shampoo. And I'm obsessed with this shampoo. It's super gentle, but it also gets the job done of getting rid of any dirt or oil or leftover color. But I also love this because it's safe for color treated hair. Um, so it does not strip your color. Um, also, this is really good if you have damaged hair as well and you're trying to repair your hair. So I love using products that are multi-purpose. So I don't really like using shampoos that are just for cleansing. I want you to do a little bit more than just cleanse my hair. So this shampoo is really good for the actual integrity and health of your hair as well. Yeah, as you can see, I had a little bit of color left over. Um, so I like to shampoo twice just to make sure that my hair is not weighed down or greasy. So this shampoo did a really good job of clarifying my hair without stripping my hair. So in order to have a nice and pluck and blowout, make sure your hair is nice and clean. So using like shampoos with too many oils in them, it's not gonna get you that, you know, hang time or like nice and silky blow dry flat iron. But yeah, this is where it starts in the shower. You wanna make sure you have a really good shampoo and conditioning routine. All right guys, so next I'm gonna use the Ajua Beauty Blue Tansy Reparative Conditioner. So this is a really, really good conditioner that has bomb slip. So I love a conditioner with good slip because this really helps me to start the finger detangling process before I actually detangle my hair before I put my leave-in products on. So this is really good to repair your hair. It also helps to manage frizz and it adds shine, which I love. But I let this sit for only about three to four minutes because I'm gonna be deep conditioning. Um, so this is just a nice prep before you do your deep conditioning routine. So I usually do not like to skip the matching conditioner when I shampoo because like I said, it's the perfect prep before you use your deep conditioner. And it's gonna make the hair mask application way easier because your hair is not gonna be as tangled. So as you can see, my hair is already super shiny and I have not even applied the hair mask yet. So now we're about to get ready to do my favorite part, which is apply my hair mask. Here I'm showing you guys what my hair looked like at the beginning of the video compared to now after I'm done applying my hair dye. Big difference. So this is the deep conditioner that I'm gonna be using. This is the Ajua Beauty Blue Tansy Reparative Mask. I'm obsessed with how thick this mask is. I love a thicky thick mask. So I like to put warm water in a spray bottle and spray it on my hair before applying my mask because this is gonna give you the best and deepest penetration for your hair mask. It's gonna penetrate way better into the hair shaft. So try spraying your hair with warm water before um, and the product is going to penetrate way better. And it applies better too, so you have more slip if your hair is wet. So I like to take at least like two quarter sizes on each side of my head. And I like to apply from the mid shafts of my hair to my ends. I usually don't like to apply too much product on my roots when I'm straightening my hair because I wanna make sure that area stays as light as possible so that my hair does not look greasy. Even though this mask did not make my hair greasy at all. Because you actually can apply this mask on your scalp, it's for scalp healing. And it's also really good for detangling. And if you're gonna use this on your curls, it's really bomb for curl definition as well. So whatever I have left over on my hands, I'll just take that and apply it near my roots so that I give that area some love.
Also, this mask does contain plant protein extracts, so it helps to prevent your hair from any breakage. And that's even more important for me when I'm straightening my hair because I'm doing a lot of manipulation with the blow drying and the flat ironing. So protecting my hair is super, super important, especially when I'm blow drying and straightening. I like to use two shower caps. You guys have seen me do this before when I deep condition. I just feel like this makes my hair a lot softer and it's really helpful for deeper penetration as well as using a beanie over top of that. And this also helps to protect my ears once I put this hot blow dryer attachment on my head. I've had this thing for years and I'm just gonna use my Dyson. And I like to use it on low heat, low speed because if you do high speed, this thing is gonna go flying off your head. So I like to let this sit on my hair for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so I've rinsed out my hair mask and my hair is already super soft and shiny. So if you're using a good shampoo, conditioner, and deep conditioner, your hair should already feel nice and soft before you even go in and blow dry and flat iron your hair. So now I'm gonna be using one of my OG products and this is the Redken Extreme Anti-Snap Treatment. This is an anti-breakage leave-in conditioning treatment and I've been using this for so freaking long. If you guys have seen my other hair routine, you know this. This is their new packaging, by the way. It's like in a spray bottle and I really don't like that because I can't control the amount of product that I see going in my hair. So I prefer the squirt bottle that they used to have. So now I just use the spray bottle the same way. I just spray it into my hands because I like to see the amount of product going into my hair when using a leave-in product because usually if you use a spray product when blowing your hair out, you can probably use too much and your hair can probably end up being kind of greasy and weighed down. So I just prefer to spray my leave-in products in my hands because I have control over the amount of product going in my hair. But the Redken Anti-Snap is one of my favorite leave-ins to straighten my hair with because it is super lightweight. So it is kind of hard to spray too much of this, but I just prefer to spray it in my hands. And it's the reason they call this Anti-Snap because it really helps uh, with any breakage. So now we begin the most dreaded process of this entire video for me, and it's blow drying. I do not like blow drying my hair because I get really hot and sweaty and it's just a task. So I like to start out with a wide tooth comb when I'm doing this because I don't like using brushes on my hair when it's wet just because it's more prone to breakage when your hair is damp or wet. So that's why I prefer going in with the wide tooth comb first and then switching out for my powder brush and I like to use a concentration nozzle. You can also use a comb attachment, but I just find that when I use a comb attachment that my hair never turns out as silky because the comb attachment is pretty fast, but I just prefer doing it this way. And honestly, this way is more comfortable for me because this is how I learned how to do my hair when I first started doing my hair at home. So I'm just used to having a brush in one hand and then the blow dryer in the other. Also using like a ceramic brown brush will help you get that look, but my hair is way too long to be trying to round brush it, so. Also another reason I think that I prefer the concentration nozzle is because the heat is concentrated in one area. So make sure when you're using a concentration nozzle that you have it pointed downward. Like don't blow like from side to side or anything, just make sure you hold it very steady because if you don't, then you're gonna create frizz. So just make sure you point the blow dryer downward. And also if you do a really good precise blowout, you won't have to do as much work when you're flat ironing. So your flat iron won't have to do nowhere near as much work if you're doing a good blowout.
next I'm going to be using the Audrey Beauty Blue Tansy Treatment Serum and this is a silicone free treatment. So this is also a product that does a lot of things like reduce breakage and it protects your hair from heat damage. So that's why I'm using this like as a heat protectant because it protects from heat. It also helps fight against frizz. So this is a really, really lightweight serum. It does not weigh the hair down or make it greasy, which I love because sometimes I can't really use a lot of serums before I go in a flat iron because they make my hair kind of greasy and weighed down. So I don't like that. But this is super, super lightweight. So I love how lightweight this is. Okay, so now I'm all done sectioning my hair off before I go in and flat iron. Uh, this is a very strenuous process, which is why I only do it like once a month during the fall and winter months because it takes too long. So now I'm just gonna take this old but tried and true bristle brush from Goody that I got years and years ago from Walmart. This brush has been with me everywhere from when I moved out all the way to now. So this brush has lasted me for a very long time. I think it's over 10 years old. I just prefer using a bristle brush when I'm flat ironing to do my chasing method versus a comb because I find that my hair is way more silky when I use the bristle brush because the bristle brush has way more bristles than the comb has teeth, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's why I prefer using a bristle brush to do the chasing method. And I usually never go over each piece more than two times. So I go over my roots a few times and then I'll drag it through the rest of my hair once or twice. Okay, so here's my hair flat ironed. This is how much it grew since the last time I cut it. My ends are a little funky looking. So it is at my hip bone, but it's a little stringy. So we're gonna get rid of all of that. Um, so I like to trim my hair at least once or twice a year, but my ends look very bad because I have not actually given myself a proper trim in a, over a year. So this is why I'm having to cut so much off. So this is why you get your trims, people. So I took off about three and a half inches. It doesn't look like that on camera, but it was about three and a half inches. I like to just take my hair in two sections, one in the back and then in the front and cut it like a, is that a 90 degree angle? Girl, I don't know. Then I just use that back piece as a guide to cut to. So yeah, all that right there. If I can see through it, it gotta go. So that's usually the rule I go by. If I can see right through it, it gotta go. So here you can see the difference. I think I missed a little bit of a piece right there on the right side. Well, your left, my right. Um, so yeah, I'm cutting to that point. Do you see how much movement this side has? So much movement, it just looks way better. This side looks kind of blah. So this is why trims are so important. Your hair just moves better. It looks healthier, it feels healthier. I'm telling y'all, my hair feels amazing. So this haircut was just like a nice reset for me, like a reset button. Um, so I also trimmed a little bit off my front pieces just so that they were as close and as even as possible with the back because I don't really have layers anymore. I feel that layers makes your hair look thinner so I prefer one length. Um, so yeah. So yeah, I took a lot more off than I usually would have because like I said, I give myself a trim like twice a year but I did it last year. So just learn from me, when you're not getting your trims, you have to get a haircut but my hair looks so much better. And like I said, it feels amazing. I, look at this. What, y'all? You see that shine? You see that bounce and movement? So yeah, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will have a full list of all the products and tools that I used in today's video in the description box. So yeah, I'll see y'all next time.